Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope you're having a good Friday. Mine has been busy. Doctor's appointment and grocery shopping. Yuck. But I'm excited to um, get started here. I'm going to do just a couple of little technology housekeeping things. If you are here, let me know that you're here. Say hello. And then if you'll share this video, I would be very appreciative. All right, I can see myself. Let's see if I can share it myself. There's a button. Let's see. Um, right under the video, if you're looking at your main feed, it says, it says share. Right under, next to comment. Okay, so let's see. All right successful share was successful I have so much to tell you guys today it's the beginning of a new month so there's lots of things to say hello okay I can see you all now good Lisa Laura Janie Pam Darcy Christine and Anne Marie hi guys thanks for joining me TGIF I hope that you're enjoying the afternoon I love Friday afternoons I love Monday mornings too because that means my kids go back to school <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right, so today, let's see, I'm gonna just adjust my phone a tad. I can't stand when it's crooked. Thank you for sharing the video, Monica. I appreciate it. 9 p.m. where you are. Wow. So for happy Friday night to you. Okay, so uh, it's, it's still a little bit crooked. One more time. Let me see. One more time, and then I swear I'll leave it alone. So I'm going to go through a couple of things while we give people time to join. Hello, everybody. Hi, Patty. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ruth. Um, I have a bunch of classes this month. Um, hopefully you saw them yesterday or Tuesday. Send out an email with all my classes, my class to go. So I thought I would take a minute. Here are the projects we're going to make in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to move them out of the way because I want to take a minute to tell you about the three classes. I normally only do two classes classes to go but it's the end of celebration and I wanted to give you one more opportunity to get a free celebration item so all three of my classes this month um, provide that opportunity for you to choose a celebration item along with the class to go kit um, this one is I'm calling it the woodland friends because I'm using these two stamp sets hedgehogs and we must celebrate I adore both of them I actually used to have a hedgehog I have had two hedgehogs when I was a kindergarten teacher I was known as the hedgehog teacher because I had a hedgehog in our classroom um, they're really fun so anyway I was really attracted to this set and of course this one right there in the same catalog page they just, I think they go together so well. And if you get one, you should get both. Um, so this class features those two. And if you buy the full set, the full kit that comes with the stamp sets, the buttons and the twine, you're also getting a celebration item of your choice. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be anything that'll fit in the envelope. Um, the only thing that doesn't fit in the envelope, unfortunately, are the 12 by 12 papers, but anything else. Um, so anyway, that's this class. There are four kind of fancy cards. I call them fancy because they have lots of layers and they're coloring. Um, there's also a little treat pouch, um, which is great for like a trail mix. And then of course the uh, the basket, um, the um, wood crate goes beautifully, right? With this, um, with this set. So that class, the deadline is, um, I've lost my train of thought because I'm reading your comments. The deadline of this one is March 20th, all right? Um, and you can see it on my blog. At the top of my blog, there's a page, there's a tab called Calendar, and all of my classes are in there. I was um, distracted, Judy. I saw your comment about 83 in Florida. Um, yeah, here in South Texas, we're going to be there joining you in the 80s and 90s, probably within a couple of days. Ugh, I get tired of that heat. I like it for a little while. Now, the third class I'm offering, and I haven't talked about the first one. I'm kind of going out of order. This is at the end of the month. This is the Petal Palette bundle and this is a double stamp set and it comes with framelits everything is sticking together uh oh what is that sticking to um and this is a pricey set when i went to uh, add up the cost of the class i had not realized that this bundle is over sixty dollars so that is that's a pricey set but this is a great way to get it because when you buy this bundle as a class you're 
basically getting the make and takes for very minimum cost. And this is a fancy fold card class. So all the cards are fancy folds. And I'm gonna, I haven't made a full video of this class yet, um, but I will soon. Um, but for those of you who love this petal palette set, and maybe you've been dragging your feet a little bit, this is the time to get it with this class. Look, this is called a shutter card, and it opens like a, like a camera shutter. The little red bird in there. Um, so, of course, when you get this class, you're getting a celebration item of your choice. Not necessarily this one, whichever one you want. And a bolt of ribbon for free. Now, guys, if you already have these bundles and these stamp sets, uh, I offer several options with my class classes. I have the one, the option one always includes a bundle. Option two is the class without the bundle. Option three is the PDF only. And option four is for my downline. They get the make and takes. Um, at a very discounted rate. Um, and then this is the class I showed you guys last week. This is one of my favorite classes that I've ever done. This beautiful um, sunshine and rainbows. And you also have the option of getting a celebration item. This one actually has seven projects. I don't normally do seven projects, but this one, um, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I love making those rainbows so much. Um, and I, in my, in the class, I'm going to show you kind of how to make that a little bit easier. Um, it, there is a way to make that a little bit easier, cutting those and adhering them together. Um, this class, the deadline is quick, March 10th. It's coming up right in a little over a week. So if you want this class, make sure you hop over to my blog or email me and I'll give you the registration link. And in fact, the registration for these classes, guys, are over on my project sheet, if I can get it pulled out from this stack. If you've never joined me for Facebook Live before, I always do some homework ahead of time. I type up these project sheets for you. And in the back, or kind of, it's kind of like a newsletter. Um, here are the three classes. Here are the links for you, right here. Type in the, the little short link and you'll find the registration information. Um, I'm also going to talk to you about the All-Star Tutorial Bundle, which we just did a blog post this morning about it. If you saw, my blog post went up at 10 a.m. And this is the card that I'm showing you. I can't show you the project that's in the All-Star Bundle today because it's supposed to be a surprise, like a sneak peek. And But... I can show you this card, which is a second project I made. Um, I use the myths and magic. And we'll pretend like you don't see the project over here. I'm just giving a little sneak peek, sneak peek, sneak peek. It's really cute. Anyway, so you're like, well, okay, well, sneak peek, where do I get it? Well, this is the all-star tutorial bundle for this month. 68 pages of tutorials for you done by 13 different demonstrators. Um, all across the world, not just the United States. I am blessed enough to be a part of this amazing team right here. We have a guest tutorial this month. Um, but you can see some really amazing demonstrators. And every month we all come up with our own um, tutorial. We type it up. Allison combines them all for us into a PDF. And this is the All-Star Tutorial Bundle. Now, this I... My main reason for doing this is to be able to thank my customers who order in my online store. When you order $50 from me, you get this. Each month, it's a different one. Um, and hey, guys, today I was thinking about this. I have a lot of things on my to-do list, <laughs> okay? A lot. And this is on my to-do list once a week. I email these out once a week. But I, I know I miss some of you sometimes. I go through all my orders and I get everybody's name in the last week and I email this to you. If I have missed you, please email me and let me know because I don't want to miss anybody. This is a perk of being on my team. I mean, on my as a customer. And I want you to get this for free if you've ordered $50 from me. So please don't be shy, email me. Um, a lot of times those things end up in spam. I, I have tried everything I can to try to um, improve my delivery rate, but for some reason, um, a lot of my things go into spam. So anyway, that's this. Now, if you are a demonstrator or maybe you already have a demonstrator, but you want this, I also sell it in my PDF store for just $15. Um, that's quite the value, if you ask me, almost a, just a, like a dollar a tutorial. Um, and they all this month feature um, occasions, catalog stuff. So that's that. Make sure you check it out.
Um, it's on my blog. And if I have missed you, please let me know. And again, I only do it once a week. So like if you placed an order two days ago, I haven't done it. So give me a week and then, you know, let me know. Or if you're just dying to have it, email me and I'll send it to you right away. Um, okay, so and one more thing I want to tell you before I give away prizes is I have mentioned to you about joining my team and what a huge benefit, bundle of benefits you get when you buy the starter kit from Stamping Up and you're on my, my team. This is the sheet that I send my team every month and they get all my PDFs for free. So I link all my PDFs to them. Then they can register for the kit. So if you're somebody that buys my class kits, this is something that you might really wanna consider. My downline gets the kits, the make and take kits for my classes for either 10 or $12. Um, that's because they have the um, access to order those products, the bundle, the ribbon, the buttons, all on their own demonstrator number and get uh, they can get their discount. So um, my team, always gets this they get they find out um you know i list what they need where they can sign up where that they can download the pdf they can use it as a class if they want um, and they also get that all-star tutorial bundle for free as well so just a little heads up it is celebration and it is the best time to buy the starter kit um it's always a good time to buy the starter kit but during celebration, it's the best time because you get an extra, two extra stamp sets in your in your kit. And today, the one that I'm doing is actually um, one of the ones I would choose because it's expensive. You know, go for the big one. Buy, you know, if you're going to buy the starter kit, buy two, add on two really expensive uh, stamp sets. There's no limit to that. So anyway. I just wanted to mention that. I'm gonna show you a couple of things I got in the mail today, or this week. Look at this, this is so cute. This is so me. I mean, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I got this as a thank you. And look how she tucked the little note in there. Um, it is, it always just floors me when I get cards from, from you guys in the mail. I just, it's so, it's so meaningful. This one came from Hillary. And the thing that I loved, it's like a little fancy card with a window. She didn't write in the card. She tucked the little note right there. So Hillary, thank you. I, I mean, this is going up on my board because it's pink and black. M my kids, we're all in love with Chucks. We love them. So this is like so sweet. So thank you. And then my amazing downline, Anne-Marie, I know you're on here. I'm calling you out. I got a box in the mail from her yesterday, and she doesn't live very far from me, you guys. She braved the post office to mail me a surprise. And look at her cute little card. Anne-Marie is known for lots of layers and lots of bling. So this was this was not a surprise when it came from her. Um, she's on my downline, and she sent me this planner, and she had it made for me. Again, do you guys see a theme? It's like it matches that card, pink and black. Um, and I told her, I texted her yesterday. It's an Erin Condren planner. And I texted her. I'm like, you have no idea. I just realized I keep a notebook on my desk where I plan out my classes. I make notes, my to-do list, and then I turn the page when it's full, and I do the next one. Well, I have a uh, notebook that I love, and I'm on like the last few pages, and I was kind of feeling a little panicked. But isn't that funny how Anne-Marie just knew? So look, it even has my name. Anne-Marie, that was so sweet. And then this little card, I guess this comes with Erin Condren, but I thought that that was like, I want to frame that. If you do what you love with passion, success won't be a far away. That's that's like a little testimony of my, you know, what I've done the last five years. I quit my full-time job to do this because it was my passion. And I have been so blessed. So I'm glad you included that, Anne-Marie. There were some other cuties in here too. Look how she, she didn't just put them in there. She put a little clip on there with some ribbon. Spoiled. I'm very spoiled and she wrapped it. I mean, Anne-Marie, you know, I'm not, I'm not a very thoughtful person. So when you guys do this kind of stuff, it blows me away and it makes me want to be more thoughtful and considerate. And I just hope you guys know how much that means to me. Okay, let's move on. Prize Patrol. Last week, I was giving away a stamp set and a... Um, a paper pumpkin, and here are my winners, Chris and Debbie. I have already emailed you, Debbie. You didn't, I didn't have a last name for you, so your email was this is cow collector, so super cute. Hopefully, you know who you are. Hopefully, you'll get my email. So, anyway, ladies, congratulations. Email me your, your mailing address because I don't have, I don't think I have either of your, your mailing addresses. So, let me know, and I'll get those in the mail on Monday. 
Um, the other thing I said I was going to do is I was going to pick several people who shared my video. And I picked four. Thank you. And I know last week totally screwed up. Uh-oh. The cat. Our neighbor. We have new neighbors with a cat. So it's just added to the barking. I apologize. Um, thank you, everyone, to share. And I know I screwed up the video last week and had to restart. Thank you for being patient with me. If the video ever dies like that, just know I'll go live right, right away again. Um, but those of you that shared, I do appreciate it. So I'm sending five handmade cards to Lisa Keen, Amy Rogers, Anita Briggs, and Kathy West. I told you guys I have a ton of cards I need to give away. So thank you for sharing. If you guys will share again this week, I'll send four more out next week. Look, I have four more already packed and ready to go to the for those of you who share next week, okay? Share it anywhere you want. On your own page, you can share it to a group. You can share it to whatever. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, Pam. Thanks for joining. I'm almost getting ready to start. I was waiting for you to join. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> okay, so prizes this week. I'm changing it up a little bit. I ordered four different embossing folders. Do you guys like embossing folders? Let me know. I kind of forget to use my embossing folders. Um, they're in a drawer, so I forget. And so I ordered four of them for you guys. So I'll choose four winners next week. We're gonna have a lot of winners next week. Four for this and four for sharing. Um, all you have to do is click that share button. Now, um, I think I mentioned earlier, if this is your first time, um, thank you for joining. I hope you like the format. I know that we all do it kind of differently. I've really been kind of watching to see what other people do and we all do it differently. I think I run mine kind of like I ran my classroom <laughs> when I was teaching school. Um, that's just the way I do things. But anyway, if you're new, make sure you go to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, and my post always goes live right when I go live, and I have products. I always say that wrong. Project sheet PDFs. The link is under the last photo. Um, it's highlighted in blue. You should be able to see it. The UPS man is here. Darn it. Okay prepare for barking. They're outside. Maybe they'll just stay outside and bark. He's bringing my Stampin' Up order. Um, so go over there, get the project sheet. Um, it lists all the, the stuff that I use. Hopefully I include everything. The, the measurements are always at the bottom of each project. And um, like right here, this one, you're going to need the measurements for that. So that's there. Um, the host code, that's the one thing I wanted to tell you. If you put in an order um, by Monday night and you use this host code right here, it's on the sheet too. If you use that host code, I'm going to send you these three make and takes today. I'm going to send you the kits. And here are the last couple that I've done. This is how they come in the mail, ready for you to stamp. So um, if you'd like these and you'd like to put in an order, do that. The minimum is 30 but I, if I were you, I would bump that to 50 so you get your free celebration item and you get that free um, tutorial bundle that I um, was showing you. The all-star tutorial bundle is free with a $50 order. Okay, I have a little checklist. Let me make sure. Did I tell you everything? Classes, all-star, team, prizes? Yes, okay, all right. So, you guys ready to stamp? Let me grab my drink. I don't talk all day because I'm I work at home by myself, so it's very strange for me. When I start doing this, I get super thirsty. Alrighty, so hi Mariah. So today I am focusing on this suite of set of projects. It's a suite, but this is a bundle. Um, you've probably seen it in the catalog. It actually takes up four pages. Um, it's a double set. It's also one of those. That's pricier because it has so many stamps in it. And if you're going to buy that starter kit, this is one of the ones I would consider. Go for those expensive ones, you guys, when you buy your starter kit. Add them in because you get them for free. So it's really pretty. Um, I've played with it a little bit. There's some really beautiful, elegant things online. And even the things in the catalog really stood out to me. And I'm actually casing one of the projects in the catalog today. Here are the framelits. You can see some of them are very intricate. We're gonna use those today. Um, and let's get started. Okay, so I think we're gonna start. Let me get organized. I'm gonna use the Stamparatus today, you guys. If you don't know about the Stamparatus, it is a pre, it was a pre-order 
deal in the late fall. It's going to be in the new catalog in June. Um, how many of you have gotten your Stamparatus? Has anybody on here gotten yours? The first wave was shipped out. Um, I was lucky enough to be on the development team, so I was able to get mine in December. Um, and it is fun. I am really starting to use it almost every time I stamp because it just is really kind of a game changer. And I'm going to show you today how I line these two things up with a Stamparatus. Um, this card, I did not put a sentiment because I think you could just leave it. You could use it for a birthday. You could use it for a wedding. You could use it for a bridal shower. And I went with all Daffodil Delight. All right, let's get started. I need some paper. Let me grab my, my grid paper. I haven't looked at your comments. Hello, everybody. Oh, Lisa, you got yours. Yes. I know. It's so wonderful. All right, I think we're going to do the main cake stamping first. So this stamp is a, what they call two-step stamping. And usually Stampin' Up! makes the, these kind in photopolymer where you can see through them. But this one is not like that. And I don't know why they did that, but they did. Oh, darn it. I put the wrong stamp head back. Hold on. Let me grab it. I was going to do crushed curry, but I decided to do Daffodil Light. And I put the wrong one back. So when I first got it, you, my friend Angela McKay, if she's on here, it was really funny. When we were playing with it at, on stage, I tried to line them up on my own and it was ridiculous. Um, she took a picture of it. It was so funny. And so that's why you've got to use a tool if you want to stamp these up. So I'm stamping the outline and Daffodil Delight right in the center of this paper. Now I'm going to move all this out of the way, bring in my big shot. All right. Oh, look, this was actually missing. I knew there was something missing when I showed you these framelits, the cake I had pulled that out. All right, so we're going to use the magnetic platform. My big shot's far away. And we're going to cut this out. And the reason why I did it kind of on a big piece of paper is because... I am going to use the negative, get back in the frame, I'm going to use the negative here in a minute on my Stamparatus to help me line this up. So the magnetic platform holds the framelit around the cake, keeps it in place where it should be. There we go, there's the negative and there's the cake. So let's move this guy back over. We're going to use the Big Shot a lot today. I probably should just leave it right here. All right, so here's the Stamparatus. Oops. It is a stamp positioning tool, if you're not familiar with it. It actually has two plates so that you can do um, several layers of stamping if you want. These plates come off easily. They turn around, so you can actually do four. You have four stamping sur surfaces. But we're just going to do one today. I'm going to actually just take this one off because I don't need it. And it comes with two ridiculously strong magnets that are ridiculously strong so they can hold your paper. Um, they, they store in the back. There's a little housing um, place for them. I have wrapped mine in washi tape to make them easier to pull off. That's why it looks kind of silly. All right, so I've put the negative on here. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to put this back on here to stamp. But the negative is actually helping me know where to put that stamp. So I kind of line it up in that hole. I can kind of slide it around and see it. By the way, you guys, I don't put the stickers on my stamps. There's a lot of controversy about that. My main reason is that I'm lazy and I don't take the time to do it. But it also will help you stick better to your blocks. Just a little tidbit. All right, so see how I did that? I laid it in there. Put the um, acrylic plate down and it's stuck up. All right, so now we're going to ink that in Daffodil Delight. Now, normally I would go ahead and stamp, but because, ooh, my stamp head is juicy. Because this is in Daffodil Delight, I actually want that to be a little bit lighter. So if I was doing it with a block, I would stamp off onto my grid paper to get some of that ink off. Um, so we're going to stamp off just by doing this, by putting a little piece of grid paper in there. Okay, now my stamp pad's juicy. I'm not sure why it's so juicy, but we're gonna just do this. I can see there's a lot, quite a bit of ink left on that stamp. So I set that down in there, 
And, well, that ink there on the top. Ta-da! And that, see how what happened? I stamped it, and it left kind of like it didn't stamp good. Have you ever stamped? And you're like, ah, it didn't stamp good, and you have to stamp again. Well, when you have a stamp apparatus, you don't have to get another piece of paper. You just put it back down because it's in exactly the same spot. And look, ta-da! You lined it up perfectly. What do you guys think? That's my favorite use of the Stamparatus. Well, I don't know, I like using background stamps on the Stamparatus too. That's one of my favorite uses because, you know, we have a lot of stamps that need to be lined up. All right, so there we go. It's perfectly lined up. Now I'm gonna take my, I like the hearts, thank you. I'm gonna take my Daffodil Delight blend, uh, blend and I'm gonna color in some of these flowers so that they're also a little bit darker, just a little bit. I'm not gonna do all of them because then I'm gonna go back and do some Wink of Stella. I think I have used Wink of Stella like four weeks in a row. <laughs> I love it. It's just glitter, you guys, and it's wonderful. Be careful when you use your Wink of Stella because it does become kind of like a paintbrush, like an aqua painter, and it will spread your ink now here, we don't have to worry too much because it's already Daffodil Delight. But if you were to color these open flowers in on white paper, it would smear around that yellow. All right, so our cake is ready. Now let's stamp, before I put the ink away, I've got a Daffodil Delight card base. Thanks for sharing, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm just gonna stamp some of these flowers randomly coming from the top. Ooh, I stamped it in, uh, well, let's try that again. I stamped it in blue just before I went live, and it looks like I didn't clean it, so that's why cardstock has two sides. All right, let's do that. And the little, I guess this is like a tulip. I made a boo-boo there too. My stamp pad is too juicy, but we're gonna cover that one up. That'll be all right. Maybe a little there, a little there. All right, so the flowers are kind of going from corner to corner. All right, so now we need to bring the big shot over again, and we're gonna cut, let's see, where are my framelits? Right here. We're going to cut the cake stand. See, here's the cake and the tag. We're gonna use a minute. We're gonna use the cake stand and we're gonna do some of these little flowers. Oh, and the bottom of the cake stand. Now these um, framelits, I told you earlier, are very, they're intricate, what we call intricate. And so they need a little extra pressure when going through the big shot. So that's why we have, what's it called you guys? I never remember the name. Somebody, somebody type it for me. The, er, I can never remember the name. Well, while somebody's helping me with my brain fart, I will line these up. All right, so we're gonna do that one there and that one there. And then, I hate this delay. I know somebody's typing the name of this platform. What is it, you guys? Come on, tell me. Precision plate, Lisa, Lisa for the win. All right, precision plate, yes. Um, I didn't mention those are the branches. Branches, leaves. All right, now I have found that this one requires me to go through a couple of times to get all the little doodads out. Let's see how we did. Goodness, I need it about a 10 foot table to do this. I'm always running out of space. All right, looks good. So let's get the brush. See if we can get them all out. A few hanging on, that's all right. That's what the paper piercer's for. Just get those last few scragglies. You could probably even get those with your finger. All right, and there's the plate, the base, the stand. It's like I forget how to speak when I'm doing this. Forget words. 
the week I couldn't remember the stupid name for the apron thing, my mom texted me. She was like, uh, you mean the strap? I'm like, oh, yes. That's exactly what I meant. Thanks, Mom. All right, so we're going to grab those three and put this back on where it goes so I don't lose it. Move that. That This is called the... Um, dye brush helps you get all the doodads out oh what a big mess I'm making today all right so let's put this guy together I'm just going to use a glue dot for the stand put it right under there and then I'm going to put a little adhesive on the bottom of my cake uh oh stay there guy hmm doesn't that look like it's centered? Well, we're going to go with it. That's going to go there. Now, I'm going to use two of these, and I'm going to save this one for the next project. So, where is my piercer? Hello, it's right here. I'm going to use glue dots for these two. I've got some bows on my glue dots left over from something I was doing last night while I was watching Timeless. Do any of you watch Timeless? I know my friend Krista does, but I don't think she's on here. It's on a show about time travelers, and it's kind of what my husband and I have been watching. Um, these are Petal Passion embellishments. They um, go there on the page with all the black and white paper. They're very pretty, and they're very flat. I like that because then it doesn't add too much bulk to your card. All right, let's tie a bow with some white twine. And put this on with a glue dot. You like that show too, Mariah? You know, it came on last year. I watched one and I was like, meh. And then I never caught it again. And then I saw that people, they were going to cancel and people were like, oh, losing their minds. So I thought, okay, we need to watch this. And it's coming back next week. So that's why we're watching it. All right, so look at all my layers. Two leaves, a bow, and an embellishment. Sorry, I get talking and I don't tell you what I'm doing. All right, let's get some dimensionals and finish this card. If you wanted to put a sentiment on this card, I would recommend maybe doing it on the inside. Whenever I kind of run out of space um, or I don't like what it's going to look like in a certain place, I just stamp it. Oh, hello. <laughs> I just stamp it on the inside. I've been doing that quite a bit lately. All right, dimensionals. I'm going to put another dimensional on that cake stand to keep him in place. And there you go. Ta-da! Pretty. I think that would make a great bridal shower card. I think that's what I would use it for. So pretty. I love it. All right, project one is done. I hope you guys like that. And just think about the different colors. I love monochromatic hearts when you just really, oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you for the hearts. When you really use just one color, um, and, and really I have two, but that's kind of a baby color. All of this is the big color. Um, I think I've told you before, my mom is an artist, always shared with me, when you're looking at a project, um, think of color as a daddy, a mama, and a baby. So large, medium, and small. So definitely Davidil Delight would be our daddy color. And then white, I guess, would be the mama. Although white's not really considered a color, really. It's a neutral. But then it's just a little baby pop of color. All right. Let me move these to the side. Get a drink. And let's do project number two, which I think is my favorite. It's this card. And I've been seeing, I have to say, I got two of these ideas from different people online. Of course, everybody's brayering and inking this paper. This is the, um, pe uh, hello, I forgot, Springtime Foils Designer Series paper that came out in the second release of Celebration. So you can only get it for free when you put in a $50 order. And right now, if I had to choose one thing, this would be what I would order with a $50 order. It's heavyweight, it's thick, and there's um, they're metallic, and there's four different patterns. So you can leave it like that if you'd like, or you can do what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna brayer it. 
and you need lots of paper behind you for this. I'm going to use Night of Navy. This is called, and I always call it the wrong official name. So let me look at my list. A foam roller, a sponge. See, that's what I call it. It's a sponge brayer. So these are <clears throat> $8 and you get four foams, foam rollers in there. So basically $2 um, and then you can keep them. Um, and use them, um, you know, put it, I put it in a bag and label it with whatever, whatever color I'm going to use. When you do on your ink pad, don't just go because you're not getting your whole pad. Do several flicks in different directions, backwards, forwards. And then you're just going to start going over this paper. Now the metallic is going to actually resist the color. So in a minute, I'm going to grab a paper towel and kind of wipe it down. Um, and it is a little bit messy. You'll get ink on your fingers when you do this, which is okay. Um, and you need to give it a few minutes to dry. So hopefully by the time we put the, the rest of the pieces together, this will be dry. All right, let's see, I can't see with the shine. All right, so now let me grab my paper towel or maybe we'll just do a tissue today. And we can kind of rub it off of the shiny parts. And I, on mine, I wanted it really dark. So I did it several times. I let it dry and then I went over it again. You're just putting more and more layers of color on here. I, I use Night of Navy a lot in the spring. I don't know why, I guess. I think navy and, and like a Kelly green and yellow, those are really good um, spring colors. All right, now look at my hands. But there you have it. Another um, way to use that, that paper. It's very, very beautiful on its own, but it's very, very beautiful when it's um, not on its own. Okay, so here is the original. Oh, you know what else? I need to bring that paper back. The other idea I got, I believe came from Holly on our Fancy Friday blog hop. I've seen lots of people coloring the ribbon, but she colored the gingham ribbon and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to do that. So I'm going to tie a bow and see just how much I need. This is the Night of Navy gingham ribbon and we're gonna color it pool party with a pool party dark blend. All right, and you know what's funny is when after you do this, your ribbon is kind of crispy. I know that sounds so weird, but I kind of liked it. It made it really stiff and easier to tie. So you're just going to color in all those. I mean, this to me, it offers so many possibilities. You can change. I've seen Patty, Patty Bennett doing this on a lot of different ribbons. Really interesting um, because these markers are alcohol. They, um, you know, they're going to dry. They're not going to bleed um, if they got wet or something. All right, so both sides looks pretty good. And I'm going to set that to dry. It is pretty wet. Man, I'm getting messy today. All right, so we need to do some cutting. Hopefully I don't get ink on my paper. I already have the circle. This is a stitched circle, the largest one. And we're gonna cut this little tag here, which is so beautiful. I've already, I saved, didn't I? Where did I put it? I saved the little stem. It's right here. I saved this from project number one. Um, so we need to cut out the little, the open flower, which is this framelit, and the fancy tag, which is right here. Now I've got a few doodads in there from last time, so let me get those out with my brush. All right, one thing I wanted to tell you a little tip on this this um, this tag. When I cut it the first time, I went through a couple of times with a precision base, and um, it didn't cut very well. So I had put it through like this. So I remembered when you are cutting something that is intricate, you want to make sure that it's going long ways so that pressure is pushed 
for a long time. You know, it's rolling through pushing pressure. It's not just bump. It's ro rolling all the way through, putting more precise pressure on there. So when I did it again like that, it was perfect. Now, um, I do, I know some of you have used dryer sheets to help in the cutting of these kinds of things. And I do do that um, sometimes, especially when I have to cut a bunch of something out that's like this. But I found that these dies are so intricate that the precision base plate really was the best option. So just a little tip. All right, so look how these are just gonna fall out. I cut it so well. I feel like I'm going really late today. I am, oh my gosh. Okay, I've gotta speed it up because I gotta pick my kids up at three. All right, I talked too long in the beginning. Get all those little doodads out. Move that, put that away. And set this down. And there we have it. Let's do a little of poke, poke, poke through. Get those out. And we've got all of our, our little things. We need to stamp our sentiment. And we're going to do that. Oh, did I not get that out? I keep looking at the wrong tray. It's right here. It's already on the block. I cut this apart, by the way, the sentiment. Let me show you. This is how it goes. It says, may your day be as wonderful as you. Happy birthday. Well, I cut it apart. Don't be afraid to cut your stamps apart because if you want to cut them, if you want to stamp them together, um, they just go back on your block like a little puzzle. So it's okay. All right. So I'm going to stamp down here at the bottom edge and grab my paper trimmer which is, of course, nowhere to be seen. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm walking over. I'm gonna grab my big one. I have a little mini one and I know I put it over here, but I'm not seeing it. All right, I just cut that and I'm gonna cut that at an angle and that at an angle like that. And let's put it all together. All right, so dimensionals, of course. Hi, Julie. Better late than never, of course. You're welcome. And Sue, too. It's okay. I know. I, I don't ever feel like I can join um, live videos right at the right time. But the good thing is that they are recorded, and you can watch the rest later. I'm just glad that you popped in. All right, some dimensionals. Woo, my hands are filthy. I'm going to put those on with glue dots. Another dimensional right on the back of this. And I just trimmed that down and cut it at an angle on each side. I need to cover up that glue dot like that. There we go. All right, let's put this card together. A piece of vellum. The measurements are on my project sheet that you can find on my blog. I just punched it there with the banner triple punch. This piece is four by five and a fourth, just to fit on a regular size card base. And we're going to put this here. And I put on with Fast Fuse, and I'm gonna cover that up in just a second when I cut this off. And here we go. Now there's another product in this suite that is an embellishment kit. And that is where these are from. I actually have the whole, I have two of them here that I've pulled apart. Um, I didn't even think about it, but I've pulled them all apart because I'm using them for my stamp club project this month. Um, but they have a ton of pieces. It is, if you are into embellishments, check out the embellishment kit that goes with this suite. Little white paper clip, adorable. And then, ooh, see how it's like stiff? I love it. <laughs> I like it. It's so easy to tie. It's like turned it into like a paper ribbon or something. And it's stiff and it works really well. All right. Whoops. Cut that at an angle. So another fun way to use your blends. For my stamp club this month, that's one thing I'm going to be doing is different ways to use your blends other than just coloring in an object. And... We're done. Did I, I feel like I'm missing. No, it looks right. 
All right, what do you guys think? Cute. We used the brayer. We used um, the blend on the ribbon. Some really cool things that you can do. All right, I'm moving on quickly. I'm moving on, I'm moving on because we are in, we're over time. I usually try to keep it at 45 minutes and I think I'm gonna be over this time. All right, where did my little box go? Where is my sample? Oh, it's hiding behind my iPad. Thank you for the hearts. You guys are so good. Thank you. All right, here's the box we're gonna make. It's see-through and it's coming apart apparently. And it's a case straight from the catalog. Um, I changed it up a little bit, but for the most part, the box itself is a case. And case, in case you were wondering, means um, copy and share everything. So, you know, use your catalog, guys, for um, inspiration. It has, they, Stampin' Up! employs professional paper crafters, dream job, right? Um, to make projects for, for us in the catalog. So make sure you're looking and, and copying those projects. All right, so we're starting with a piece of the Sweet so Soiree paper. It's three by three, and I'm gonna score it at a half inch on all four sides. We're gonna do two of these, one for the bottom and one for the top. Okay, now before I put my Simply Scored away, this is a window sheet. And yes, we carry window sheets. They probably have overlooked them. They're in the annual catalog um, with all of, like the glimmer paper and other kinds of paper. Um, this measures two and a half by eight and a fourth, but don't write it down, go print the sheet out. And we're gonna score it. And we've got to really push hard when you score on um, a window sheet. First at one and seven eighths, then three and seven eighths, um, five and, no, no, yeah, five and three fourths. I have them marked, why am I even looking at my notes? And seven and three fourths, okay? So push down hard with your stylus or your score in, scoring tool, whatever you're using. And look, I have my bone folder today. We're gonna fold these in and really, this is when you really have to use your bone folder. Okay, so push those down. I love window sheets. I think they kind of make projects a little magical when you can see through something. I don't know, it feels fancy. All right, so there is the, the size of the boxes. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm gonna just go down this tab right here with fast fuse. And put it behind the other side. All right, now we can really get it to square up. Okay, now we're gonna make the bottom first. We're gonna make the bottom a little bit different than we're gonna make the top. A little, just a little bit. I'm going to, first I'm gonna cut the corners off, corner to corner, from score line to score line, just cutting those corners. Then on two opposite sides, I'm gonna snip the score line up to the horizontal score line. Oh, it kind of was off there. Oh well. All right, now I'm actually going to put adhesive on all four long tabs. Now stay with me for a second, you'll see why. Now I'm gonna tuck the sides, the little corners in, on one side only. Okay, and there we've got, just like that. Leaving this side open. I'm actually gonna fold these out for a second. And I'm gonna slide this guy right in. This makes it a little bit easier than trying to slide it down when all four sides are with adhesive. All right, now fold these in and fold this remaining side up and press it in really good. Tear and tape would be really good for this. All right, so there's your box bottom. Now for the lid, we are just going to put, we're gonna cut it the same. I'm not gonna take the time to cut off the corners right now, but we're only gonna put adhesive on the front side of the square tabs. 
because we're going to fold them behind. Okay, so folding in, folding in, folding in, folding in. All right, there we go. And there is your lid. So cute. Let's get some old olive. Um, this is the old olive finely woven ribbon. I think these would be great to hold some, well, any kind of candy really, but I had some white Jordan almonds recently that I used for a project and they're beautiful. So if you're doing some kind of little, I don't know, like a garden party, an outside event or for Easter, something springy. All right, now let's make the tag. We're gonna do the same thing we did a minute ago with, let me grab that other stamp. Hmm, where did it go? Right here. With the Stamparatus. This one is a little more difficult to do because the framelit and the stamp are just kind of a blob. So what I did is I got, this is, one is the inside, the inside solid stamp, and one is the outside outline. So we're gonna, it, it, it wasn't as easy to line up as the cake. So what I did is I put a, a Sharpie marker on them on the same side. So there, and then even over here. So when I go to, when I stamp it like that, I can line that up once I figured out where exactly it goes. All right, so, oh, and we need a little bitty flower and we need some Daffodil Delight. All right, so let's grab, I'm using Marina Mist this time. And I need to clean this because we stamped it in Daffodil Delight first. I don't have my spray, but we'll go ahead and clean it as good as we can get it with a dry pad. All right, so let's see what we need. We need a little yellow flower. And I'll do that one over here. And we need a little solid marina mist flower. And I'll do that one over here. You'll see why I'm doing that in a second. And then here's the big guy. So I'm gonna turn the dot to the left. Notice, actually, no, that's not what I need. I need the outline. The outline is the one right here. And I'm gonna make sure that the dot is on the right, not my left, on my right. And I'm gonna stamp that in Marina Mist down here like that. Okay? All right, let's cut them out. I didn't put a sentiment on this project either. I don't really think it needs one. All right, so we know that the left dot goes to the left. Ah, you guys can't see. Left dot. And then that one, when you have little framelits that are hard to figure out, you know, they're turning and turning and turning it, that's one way to do it is put a mark. Once you figure out the way it goes, put a mark there. I obviously need to do it to that one too. All right, let's cut them out carefully. The little ones like to jump around. All right, we're gonna get rid of all of our framelits. And here is one flower. Here's the, this flower, and here's the solid flower. All right, let's bring my Stamparatus back in. Hmm, I wish you guys could see my office right now. It's a giant pick, more so than usual. All right, so we're going to do it in the same fashion we did last time. If you're interested in purchasing the Stamparatus, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until June, but it will be in the new catalog. All right, so where's our filled in? We know that it went this way. So I'm going to take this, make sure it's clean. Ooh, it's not clean. It's not very clean at all. So I'm going to stamp it off over here a bunch. All right, we're gonna put it in that hole. This one was a little bit harder to line up. I'm not gonna lie, but it still worked. All right, now we're gonna stamp off again because we did the outline of Marina Mist and we're gonna do the inside of Marina Mist. So 
so we got to stamp off so let's just put a piece of paper there stamp and now fit this little doodad in here this cute little flower and let's see Ta-da! I mean like a glove love it love it love it love it all right I think we're ready uh oh one more thing we needed to cut one more thing we needed to cut and that is the stems let's cut the stems really quick I should have done it a minute ago the stems put them on here um, what time is it you guys what time is it uh, my school is half a mile from my house so I don't have to worry about too much and they actually like to walk home sometimes they like if I if I'm late <laughs> such a mom no oh, I'll just be late all right let's get these guys out this time I'm gonna use two of them I like the two solid ones the best so we're gonna use those and let's do all of this I'm not reading comments at all you guys I'm sorry I've neglected you oh my goodness I need an assistant today to keep my mind in place I'm looking like a real artist today with stuff everywhere all right so do those like that and then we want some dimensionals hopefully you guys can see I zoomed the camera in a little bit today I don't want to zoom it in too much because then the big shot is like you know too big all dimensionals and there we go now let's see I didn't do my best work on this box but we're just gonna go with it we're gonna go with it let's see we're gonna put one on each side and we're going to straddle that ribbon so they can untie the ribbon and open the box like that La -da -da -da. see this one has the ready shreddy in it that is also with this suite you guys that's it that's the third project what do you think i've been kind of a dingbat today but i think you got the point i hope that you have learned something new Please share the video if you haven't, and please go over to my blog and enter to win an embossing folder. There's a widget at the bottom. Yay, thanks so much. There's a widget at the bottom. It's called a raffle copter, and you just enter your name and your email address. I'd really like to know um, what you guys are looking for in specifically April um, and May, what kind of classes. I am kind of getting, I've kind of used all my favorite products. So what kind of classes do you guys want to see? What projects do you want to see? Um, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. And um, make sure to get your orders in by Monday night so that you can get these three projects in the mail next week. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, guys. Y'all are so sweet. Um, I will go back and look. Um and see what kind of questions you have and I'll respond to them um, later. I do appreciate you guys so much, you're so sweet. All right, have a great afternoon, enjoy your weekend and I will see you next Friday, bye.